Yeah. All right. Let's let's move to number three, and then we'll get to number four because I think there's a lot to say there. So number <laughs> three, I think, is a, a well done. But number three, according to the UN WTO, uh, ecotourism definition, the third characteristic is it is generally but not exclusively organized by specialized tour operators for small groups. Service provider partners at the destinations tend to be small, locally owned businesses. And I can just say off the top, most all of our local dive operations or dive operations, depending on where you are, are typically fit this category. I mean, they're, they're, they're even the big ones still are small in comparison. locally owned businesses. Yeah. In comparison to other things. So, I mean, I think, yeah, usually organized. And, but I do think the only point I'll make here is that, that when you go to a destination like this, there are options. And I see a lot in, you know, questions from divers, whether it be social media or questions I get and things like that about like, Hey, I'm going here. Any, any recommendations on operator? And I think we can be a little bit more discerning in trying to figure out which operators, if this is important to us, your tourism is important to us or have these practices as part of their operation. And, and they're not just, you know, marketing employees, but are, are really practicing these things and in, in how they approach that environment. And, and that can be hard to find out. And it, and it can, you can be hit and miss where you think you've nailed it and it's not the case. But I think that's a consideration that we as divers that, that are traveling somewhere can add into the mix or our expectation is to have an eco-friendly, um, quote unquote, whatever that means, right? Fitting this definition, but eco-conscious operator taking us somewhere rather than, you know, someone who, who isn't thinking about those things. And that's where, you know, your vote is your dollar and your vote is your time in some ways. So I'll, I'll, that's my only two cents on this third point is I, I think that there are some discernment pieces we can use. Yeah. And the, the number of the local operators and their practices um, definitely contribute to ecotourism. You know, just discussing what we were talking about earlier is what kind of briefs are they doing on the boat? What rules do those local operators have that aren't necessarily required by law? Because a lot of the uh, coral reefs, for example, um, will get like resting periods between seasons to help them kind of recuperate and recover. Um, you know, do the local laws uh, require you to not wear gloves like in some destinations because they believe that that will help um, deter people from wanting to touch the reefs? And so are those dive operators enforcing those laws or those rules, or is maybe that's not a law in the country you're visiting, but the dive operator requires you not to wear the gloves anyway. So little things like that can definitely make a big difference in the grand scheme of the welfare of the reefs that are being dived on frequently. Yeah, no. So, so like a super interesting anecdotally story, not really anecdotal story here, but a good example of this is this the the city of Tulum in Mexico. So I was there about a year ago and I was hearing the story of how Tulum has just boomed, right? As a, not just diving destination, but kind of a mindfulness and yoga and all these things combined into this, this mix of Tulum being this super desirable travel location. And I can understand why it's going to, I love that part of the world. But what's interesting is the infrastructure for the city of Tulum or in the area thereby um, was so unprepared for that type of explosion that they were talking about the sewage system basically being overrun and causing all sorts of havoc on the water system and so on and so forth. That tourism, over tourism was the phrase that the locals were using is causing all these other downstream effects. And so again, do I want to go stay in Tulum because of all the amazing things? Yeah. But I also need to be conscious of the way that my stay there is impacting the local ecosystem. So I might choose, for example, to, to call up our friends at under the jungle and see if that room's available, right. Or to, to stay somewhere else. Um, and not in the center of Tulum, even though that might be the most desirable spot for me, or if I'm going to do that, 
to understand the impacts of it and how that particular hotel or operator is dealing with mitigating their impacts to that. So again, it's just a little bit of the, going back to number two, the education, not blindly kind of like, you know, booking something without understanding the, the impacts that that trip could take. And it's not to feel guilty. It's just having some responsibility around it. So um, again, we have choices, lots of choices as divers in, in terms of the operators that we choose and the hotels that we choose to stay in and the food that we choose to eat and so on and so forth. And I think it's, it's combining the education along with asking those questions can be really helpful to minimizing our impact in our travel to do what we love. Uh, your, uh, your story about the sewage systems in Tulum is a really good uh, indicator of how the, just the volume of tourism in itself, and the amount of tourists that go at any given time could be problematic and how a lot of infrastructure is not necessarily prepared to deal with the environmental impact of having so many people. people we leave trash, we use toilets, we eat food. It all produces some sort of waste or takes away from another environment or infrastructural setting in some way or another. So Yeah, and there's a chicken and egg question there, right, too. It's like you can't really point whose fault is it? Well, the city of Tulum should have seen this coming and should build better infrastructure or tourists shouldn't travel there. Or, you know, you, you have this kind of like, it's not about pointing the finger of who to blame in that sense. I, I think the, the bigger point here is to understand that influence and, and then react to that. And I think if you, if you're not at least curious about how your trip that you've always wanted to take is going to have an impact on the environment and the location that you want to be there, then, then that, that says something to me, you know, <laughs> it's something yeah. that, that you can, you can find out and, and make choices that are, are maybe more beneficial all around and still get what you want, still go diving in, in Cosmo, right. And no big deal. Um, but that's, that's the, the choices that we make from a provider perspective, I think has, has an influence. Yeah. And, and, a yeah. Balancing act basically. Yeah. 